Hey, today is uh, Saturday, January 7th, 2023. Um, I think the yesterday I showed you the result of drilling out the counterweight on the right elevator. What I showed you was that um, on one of those holes, it wasn't quite straight. And so where it came through the flange of the rib, there wasn't a lot of edge distance between the edge of the hole and the spar or the, the web of the rib. Um, I test fit it with the bolt and the washer and the nut and there's enough clearance and everything. Maybe I have to radius the edge of the washer a little bit to make sure that it, that it um, sits securely without any uh, tension or interference with the spar web. I contacted Vans Builder Support and they said that, um, yep, that's totally doable. Uh, so build on. Anyways, I did get something in the mail today. This, this says oops on it. Um, these are oops rivets. So if, um, if I mess up a hole, you know, if I'm, if I've got a, a three thirty second uh, hole, um, and I end up wallowing it out, making the hole, uh, a little, uh, wonky and out shaped, uh, the, the normal rivet that would, that's supposed to go there wouldn't necessarily it uh, wouldn't set properly. Uh, so what these oops rivets are, I guess I should kind of show you, but I don't want to spill them all over the place. An oops rivet is a rivet that is sized up in terms of like, so basically what you do in that situation would be to go the next. So in that instance, it would be a number 40, um, drill and you'd upsize it to a number 30, which would be a one eighth, um, shank rivet. An oops rivet is the same, uh, sorry, the same size rivet head with a larger shank. So, um, the result is that the dimp, you could use the same size dimple and the rivet head on the skin will look the same as if it were that three thirty seconds rivet, but it's a larger shank. So, and there are a number of different sizes because, um, different uh, different size rivet shanks, and then also the different lengths of rivets because it depends on the thickness of the material that you're joining. Anyways, those will live in here until I need them, but now I have them. Uh, today, I'm gonna continue working on the right elevator now that I know that I can proceed with that, that whole, um, through the counterweight that I drilled. Um, so I'm just gonna kind of follow down the steps. Um, there are a few more pieces that need to be assembled and then ultimately um, go through kind of a tricky process of putting the, uh, putting the skeleton into the skin. So I'm gonna work my way through that as far as I can today and still you know, cross my fingers that maybe there's one more mail delivery today that will be the stiffeners for the rudder. Anyways, that's it. So um, we'll do some time-lapse here and uh, see how things go. Not only do we have to drill through the lead, but we actually have to cut it, which is what you see me getting ready to do here. So I'm taking it off the assembly. I've got the plans laid down in front of me. And uh, let me show you what that looks like. As you can see in the plans here, there is a hatched area drawn out that needs to be removed from that uh, counterweight for the right elevator. This counterweight doesn't need to be as heavy as the one on the left elevator because it doesn't have to overcome the weight of a trim motor like the other side does. So it is a full scale drawing, which means I could just place it on top of the plans like you saw me do there and uh, draw out where the cuts need to happen, go over to the bandsaw and promptly get it stuck. Um, you'll notice um, <laughs> through most of the rest of the video that um, over there on the right side, that lead weight is stuck in the bandsaw. Uh, I just decided to move on to other things and solve that problem later, which will happen toward the end of the video. So right now I'm uh, fitting, mocking up uh, the right elevator so that I can do final size drilling on all those uh, little holes that will attach the skin to the skeleton. Um, 
and then also here in a little bit, you'll see me with a, a white piece of uh, powder coated steel, which is the elevator horn that needs to be match drilled in several places. And because of the powder coating, you always have to remount those holes a little bit to even get Clecos through there. Uh, another thing that you'll see me doing here is uh, checking out um, the bend, and I'll probably grab a straight edge and lay it across the elevator to see if I'm happy with the bend as it is now that I've got it all pulled together. Uh, spoiler alert, I'm not happy with it. Um, it's a little bit underbent, um, but that's a problem that will be solved tomorrow in the subsequent video. Um, so yeah, working on all of the final size match drilling of the skin and the rudder horn, which you see, or rather the elevator horn that you see in my hands right now. Um, that's a weird little uh, spot right there where it attaches both to the spar and to the root rib. And so when you join the spar and the root rib together, you have to use uh, flush rivets so that that piece, uh, the, the elevator horn can fit over the top of it. Uh, once that's done, I'll get that out of the way and go back to the lead weight and um, ultimately what you'll see me do is just remove the entire blade from the bandsaw, take it back to the bench. And I grabbed a, a flat, um, scraper tool, like a painting tool to get down in that wedge and pry it open so I can get the blade out and ultimately break that piece of lead off. Um, and then get the final shape with files. In the end, it wasn't that bad. It's just an awkward process. Um, what I've learned between drilling and cutting uh, lead is that um, even if you try to go slowly and you use, you know, generous lubricant, um, it still loads up really quickly on the blades or in the flutes of the bit, and it and uh, the bit will get sucked down into it, and it's really hard to get it back out. So I would just say do very tiny increments working your way down. Um, I'll probably mention this again later, but um, one, I think, big lesson that I learned is that um, I think that I made things even harder on myself when drilling through it by um, drilling pilot holes because then when I went up to the larger size, it was almost impossible to control the drill without it getting just sucked down into the material and ended up um, on the next lead, uh, weight that I had to do, uh, broke off a bit and just had to let it sit for a while and then uh, use vice, uh, vice grips to back it out. I would prefer to drill through the lead um, with, the, uh, with the drill press, but that assembly and it has to be drilled when it's completely assembled is far too tall to fit in that drill press that you know with the shelf all the way bottomed out you maybe have six or eight inches uh to place material so anyways here i am finishing up the lead weight um yeah it's just a little bit of muscling and getting it done and uh i'll go ahead and let this um uh, run out the rest of the way um this was the 7th of January, 2023. I think I get one more day of building in before I leave on a 10 day work trip. And that's kind of how the rest of the late winter, early spring will go long interruptions with fits of building in between. So please uh, like, if you do comment, if you have one and subscribe and we'll see you in the next one.